Not all questions are equal. What are the best questions that you should be asking inside of the classroom? And I have one that you probably do not expect. I think we need to start with the most important. And I remember when I first took calculus, I was scared. I was scared out of my mind because all I thought about was calculus was so hard. Was I going to be smart enough or able to actually complete the class? And I remember somebody told me, I don't remember who it was, that I should just ask my teacher how to be successful in their class. So guess what? The very first day after the first initial class, I went up to the professor and I said, how can I be successful in your class? And it was amazing to me that the professor just opened up. He gave me all of these ideas that I should start to implement to be successful in this class. And guess what? Because I was so invested on being successful in that class, I followed everything. And I ended up doing better in that class than I probably thought I ever would. And guess what? Calculus was not as scary. But knowing what my professor wanted me to do gave me an extra bit of confidence that I could be successful and the pathway that I needed to follow. And that's something that I advise all of my students to go and do when they are first starting out with any course, because you're not used to your teacher. You're not used to how they are going to operate or how the class is going to be, how the class schedule is going to follow. This shows your teacher that your willingness to be vulnerable, to ask for help, and that you want to be successful. And guess what? Your teacher is there to support you. That is what they want more than anything else is to see you being successful. So if you want to get your teacher on your side and also see success in the classroom, start with asking your teacher, how can I be successful in your class? But in reality, I still didn't get an A in that class. I still struggled. I was still one of those students that just sat in the back of the classroom. And if I didn't understand something, I just, you know, kind of kept quiet. I'd never really wanted to raise my hand and kind of feel stupid in front of other students. However, on the flip side, as a teacher, one of the more annoying things, I guess sometimes we could say, and you might see in my older videos of a student like raising a question or asking, you're like, wow, Mr. McGlogan, you're so mean because, you know, I would maybe snap back at the student because they interrupted my class multiple times asking questions. Now, I love when students ask questions because that is how you understand things better. I wish as a student would have asked more questions, would have gotten over that fear of feeling stupid or thinking that everybody understood everything besides me, because that is obviously not the case, right? We want to encourage you to ask more questions. But maybe I had teachers that were sometimes like me, where sometimes you would get a response and you're like, oh, they're being annoyed and maybe I'm just going to shut up and sit down and, and just listen to what they're saying. But I think one of the things that got under my skin when students would sometimes interrupt my lecture with a question is a lot of times they'd just say, like, I don't understand. And as a teacher, that doesn't really help me out. What I want to understand is what is it you currently understand what is it I need to go a little bit deeper on? Or where do we have common ground? And where are we kind of missing some elements? I think one of the best questions you can ask while your teacher is actually teaching is say, hey, I understand this, but this concept or this definition or explanation, I'm still having a hard time understanding. Can you maybe re-explain or provide a different example? That frames the question in a whole understanding because I know what they understand and I know what they don't understand. So what I need to do as a educator is give that bridge. I need to have a bridge for that gap of understanding. Maybe that might be another example. Maybe that might be providing them a different analogy or slowing things down. So I think it's really helpful to give your teacher some context when you're just asking questions rather than just interrupting and saying, I don't understand or what's that, you know, and just interrupting their flow, but also giving them some context so they know what is working and what is not working. So therefore they can readjust. Now, not always are they going to readjust. And sometimes you might have somebody that doesn't like answering questions during the lecture at all. I get it. I always tried to be very, very open with my students when I was teaching. But there's one thing that I would probably say has probably made a difference more in my student grades than anything else. Now, again, this wasn't something that I did, but it was something I encouraged my students to do because what I reckon as a teacher is that grades are not perfect. I always try to make my grades reflect my students' understanding. However, I don't think there is a perfect grading system. And every single time that I gave back students their tests, I said, if you have any questions or you want to go over your quiz or your test, please come and see me and let's go over it. Now, most students would not take me up on that offer, but I will say for the students that did and that asked the right questions, a lot of times they got more than what they were expecting. So what is it they asked? They asked, hey, why did I get this wrong? Or why did you give me this many points for it? Now, again, these would be for free response, not multiple choice questions. But what's important about those questions is it made me as a teacher reflect on my grading process or the rubric that I was using to grade the student's understanding. And sometimes having a back and forth conversation, I could see or understand what it is they understood, how they approach the problem, and a lot of times my grade stood. I'd defend my grade how they understood it. Even if they didn't agree with it, the grade would remain. 
However, there was a lot of times that I would see a student would bring in my grade. We would have a discussion about it, what they did and how they approached the problem and how I graded it. And I kind of had a little aha moment. I'm like, you know what? I might've been a little bit harsh for you. I might've been grading this at 11 o'clock at night and still had lesson plans to go or had a screaming baby next to me. And you know what? I might've graded you a little bit harder on this than maybe I did for other classes. So guess what? Let me give you a point or two points back. And I'll tell you, some students figure that out. They came back to me every single test to go over my grades. I embraced it because I know that I am not a perfect teacher, nor is any grading policy going to be perfect. Not so much question your teacher's grading, but to have a better understanding of it. Even if no grades get changed, hearing your teacher being able to define how you were assessed not only helps you get a better understanding of the mistakes, but also helps you better prepare for upcoming assessments. Because in the end, we want to keep on improving, right? But sometimes, even when we're making improvements, we're still not getting the grade that we want. Now, I did not lead with this one because if you lead with this question, it's probably my most hated question I get. Students would always come and ask, how do I get an A? How do I get a B in my class? And if you lead off of that question, immediately what I think about is you just care about the grade. You don't actually care about doing any learning. That's why I said how to be successful as that first question, right? Because if you're just focused on the grade, then all I'm thinking of is you just want to do shortcuts to be able to get best grade possible. You're not willing to put in the work. However, after we've gone through these assessments, after you've already maybe came in and trying to get help for your tests and your quizzes, and you're still not getting the grade that you want. Maybe you're making some improvements, but maybe you're like at an 88% or at a 65%, but you want to get to that next level. Ask your teacher, how can I get an A, a B, a C, whatever it is, that next level up for you. I think this is important because what it shows your teachers, once they've already seen that you're putting in the work, you're putting in the effort to get better, they want to join your team. It's not about you versus them. They want to see you be successful. So just like at the beginning of the year, when you want to be successful, they'll give you some tips. Now, They'll kind of do whatever they possibly can, or at least I always wanted to do whatever I possibly can to give you as many opportunities to be able to reach that grade. And the reality is sometimes there are no options for you to get to that grade or it's just not going to happen. That is real life. However, always ask the question, show the teacher that you are determined, show the teacher that you are putting in the effort and doing the work and you just want a little bit more guidance. More often than not, the teacher is going to do what they possibly can do to help you receive that grade. Now, those four questions are pretty important, but this last one is probably not one that you would expect, nor I would probably think that many teachers would agree with me on. But follow me here. A last question I would recommend that you ask is, can I go to the bathroom? Now, why would I say, can you go to the bathroom? That's an interruption, right? That's leaving you out of instruction. But let's face it, we need breaks. We cannot just sit in the classroom and absorb all of the information that is being bombarded from a lecture or even from a worksheet all the time. We need breaks. And I would advise students all the time, especially those days where I actually had to lecture for long periods of time. I'm like, guys, I'm sorry. We have a lot of information to cover. This is going to be a lot of me talking. You're going to want to get all this information. However, if you need to take a break or go to the bathroom, get a drink of water, please go and do it. Because I know after about 10 to 15 minutes, I am going to start losing some of you. Even how hard you're trying, your brain is just not going to be able to focus on the information that is being presented. So take advantage of breaks. Hopefully your teacher allows bathroom breaks. And obviously you want to pick opportune times during class to go and do that. Understand yourself. Me, I could never sit down for a 90-minute lecture. I would lose my mind. Every single math class that I always had to take was always between 45 and 55 minutes. Thankfully, I never had very, very long math lectures because that would not just fit my learning style. Hence, why most of my videos are under 10 minutes in length. I like things short and to the point. So take advantage of what you have, the bathroom. Go and get a break, refocus, and get the grade that you work for and that you deserve. Hope this was helpful. Cheers.